Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Capacitor Voltage Divider in Half Bridge Converters An Answer to a Riddle. In a previous video that I've posted, entitled LCC vs. LLC Converters Part 1, I have posed a riddle in which I have asked what is the difference between these two circuits. Now, these two are parallel resonant converters with an inductor output filter or LC filter and the parallel is the fact that the load is connected in parallel to the resonant capacitor and then we have here the resonant inductor. We have then these two capacitors which are bulk capacitors, these are DC blocking capacitors because you cannot connect this point to ground since you'll have a galvanic short here. At this point, at the midpoint, we do have a DC average because this is a unipolar pulse generated here as these two transistors are, are turned on uh, each one at its time. And consequently, this average DC might short here to ground if this point will be connected to ground. So you do need a DC blocking capacitor. Here on the right we have also basically the same parallel resonant converter. However, in this case we have only one capacitor. So the question is, what is the difference between these two in terms of uh, performance? Are they the same? Is one of them better than the other? So this was the question that I have actually posed and uh, the purpose of this uh, video is to sort of explain this issue. So I'm going back to the classical half-bridge PWM converter in which we do have the same problem and usually uh, the debate starts actually here and it's the same issue of course. And here I'm showing a half-bridge PWM converter with a duty cycle. Here is two transistors. They are turned on uh, sequentially with a certain duty cycle and once Q1 is conducting we are feeding the transformer one way, when Q2 is conducting we are trans uh, feeding the transformer the other way and consequently we do have currents of Q1 that looks like this, the current of Q2 at its time, so we have a current uh, through these transistors. Now the input current here is the current of uh, Q1. This is the same current because uh, this is the line that's going to Q1. So we see here now the sequence. When Q1 is on we have the current going this way and therefore we are sort of charging the capacitor. Uh, we see it here. Well it's the direction here so this is why this is a negative and in the other half cycle we have Q2 conducting and then we are drawing current from the capacitor this way and therefore we have this current. So we have um, the current of the capacitor are of course plus and minus. The average must be zero because this is in steady state and uh, the purpose again of this capacitor is basically a DC blocking capacitor. It should be uh, of high capacitor so as that the uh, voltage drop as a function, as, as a result of the uh, current passing through it would not be high. So what happens if we do have two capacitors? Well in this case when the Q1 is conducting we have again current flowing through the transistor but now this current going through the transformer is split into two parts. One is going this way and one is going this way and as a result the total current, the net result of the current come required from the input at this particular minute is of course half the value of Q1 because we have Q1 here and then half of Q1 is going this way and half of it is going 
this way. So we are actually feeding in the current into this uh, middle point. Now, when the Q2 is conducting, we are drawing current from this midpoint to the transformer through the Q2. And in this case, we're going to have the input current, the value of which would be also I over two, because uh, we are just uh, seeing half of the Q2 current since it's being split here between the two capacitors. I'm assuming, of course, that these capacitors are of equal well value. This is why I'm saying that this is I over two. If they are not, uh, then of course there'd be some sort of a other division. So here's the picture that we have. Now we have Q1 and Q2, these are the control signals. These are the currents of Q1 and Q2. We have now the input current. Now with one capacitor, we're going to have this current. With two capacitors, we have half the value here, but then we have another one here. Obviously the average must be the same. And in this case, we are going to have a lower ripple current and twice the frequency because we have current both when Q1 is conducting and Q2 is conducting. This is a benefit, of course, because the ripple is lower and the frequency is higher, so it's easier to um, attenuate or to uh, filter out this uh, injection to the input. Now, IC2, in one case here, will be a higher current, while with two capacitors, then, of course, it'll be lower, and IC1 now also will have plus minus current. Obviously, the average must be zero in each case, and the, the RMS value of the current is a half or what it was with one capacitor. So having two capacitor is beneficial. It's beneficial in the sense that the input current becomes lower or smaller, the pulses are smaller, so the RMS of the ripple is smaller and the frequency is twice the frequency with one capacitor. So this is the, the main difference between uh, the two capacitor and one capacitor uh, in circuits like this. And then there is another question that I'm posing here. What is the voltage here? Now it is sort of uh, a common conception to call this two capacitors a voltage divider. Well, for DC, these are not voltage dividers. You cannot divide DC with two capacitors. In fact, if you have a DC here, no connection here, and you ask what is the voltage here, you can't tell unless you, name, you have some more information like initial conditions, like some other circuit connected to it. So the term voltage divider is incorrect because this cannot, these two capacitors cannot divide the DC. However, it is legitimate, of course, to ask what is the voltage here? Well, we can find it uh, by considering the fact that the average voltage on an inductor or a primary of transformer is zero in steady state, the average. So therefore the DC here is like the DC here or the average value here. Now the average value here, here is dependent on the duty cycle of Q1. That is here, we're going to see at this point that I'm pointing, we're going to see uh, pulses going up to V in and zero, V in and zero with a certain duty cycle. The average is V in over this duty cycle. And this average is the voltage that eventually will be stabilized here. So the voltage here is not controlled by these two capacitors, but rather by the average voltage here. Now, it'll be the same if you'll have one capacitor, the same story. Or in fact, you can have only C1 without C2, it'll be the same. Or if these capacitors are not of equal value, it'll be the same because the voltage here is determined by the average voltage here. 
So, we go back now to the original circuit, and the answer to the riddle is then that these two, these are bulk capacitors, these are not resonant capacitor, this is the resonant capacitor, this is bulk capacitor, just DC blocking capacitor, are used first of all as DC blockers, and then if there are two capacitors, we can reduce the ripple at the input and we'll get a ripple of twice the frequency. Now there is a question now, if we do have bulk capacitors like these, do we still need a bus capacitor here? And here is the situation. If we have two capacitors, we still have ripple current here. Although it's lower, it'll be half if these two capacitors are equal. It'll be half the original one without the two capacitors, that is with one capacitor. But still, there is a ripple current here. So you do need a bus capacitor. This cannot replace this thing because there's still quite a bit of ripple current coming here and you don't want to carry it all the way to the source uh, of this power supply. So we have this current passing through the uh, bus capacitor. Now, in this situation of an LLC or LCC, that is LLC is two resonant inductors plus a resonant capacitor. And in this case, we have a transformer, rectifier, and a capacitive filter, the capacitor here at the output. Or in the case of an LCC, that is two capacitor, two resonant capacitors in a resonant inductor. Again, here we have a transformer, but in this time, at this time, it is connected in parallel to the capacitor. Again, we have here a capacitive uh, filter. Now, in this case, we really don't need an extra bulk capacitor as the DC blocking capacitor because the CR serves the same purpose. CR now is in series here, and therefore it'll block the DC that we'll have here in a half bridge. Now, the voltage on this capacitor this capacitor, and I'm showing here, like this is the LLC just drawn in a different configuration. I've put the capacitor here. The voltage across this capacitor, this capacitor, is again the duty cycle times V in, duty cycle of Q1, because the average voltage here is eventually going to be shown here as a DC voltage on this capacitor. So now, here I'm showing one capacitor, and in fact, we can put another one. Now, there is a difference between the previous picture and this one, in that previously we we're talking about bulk capacitor, while here we're talking about resonant capacitors, okay? So CR1 and CR2 uh, in parallel are in fact this CR capacitor, or this one, depending on the configuration. And the question is, is there any advantage here? Well, there is an advantage, again, because the ripple current here will be lower and the frequency will be twice. Same thing as we had it before. But there is another advantage here. And that is related to the initial condition and actually the startup of a converter. I'm showing here a series resonant converter. This is inductor, capacitor, resonant element, a transformer, which actually brings the output in series with the resonant network. Okay, so this is a series resonant converter. Now again, uh, this capacitor is here shown as single capacitor. It will block the DC and uh, it'll do the job in terms of uh, preventing a galvanic short. However, in this circuit, at the beginning, at the startup, the voltage on this capacitor is zero. Steady state, it'll be the duty cycle times V in, when normally, uh, in this case, uh, we'll run it at duty cycle of 50%, 
So the voltage on this capacitor will be half V in. Now, if we now start up the circuit with a capacitor which is zero voltage on it, it's going to be a fairly uh, dramatic uh, transient here and uh, currents would be higher. You might have uh, also hard switching uh, at this period. And so you'll have to use a very slow um, soft start mechanism, uh, changing the duty cycle very little in order to cope with it, because otherwise you might have uh, quite heavy currents here as a uh, transient due to the fact that this capacitor is a uh, zero voltage on it and it has to be charged with this circuit um, to the uh, steady state value, uh, which is again V in time duty cycle. Now in this case, there is a benefit to use two capacitors as I've shown here, like these two capacitors. And contrary to what I've just said or said earlier that these capacitors are not voltage divider, this is correct, but if you add more information to it, then you can tell what will be the voltage here uh, in a given situation. Now we are talking now about a very special case in which the voltage on each of this capacitor is zero. This is before turning on the system. And then you feed in V in. I'm talking about this configuration here, V in comes in. And in this case, if both of these capacitor had zero voltage on them before uh, the initiation of this V in, they will charge the same because the same current, the same charge is passing through them. And so therefore they'll charge to V in over two for this particular situation. So therefore in this case, you might say that this is sort of a voltage divider, um, sort of, and therefore it'll automatically come up to be the required value. So if you have this situation here, then at startup, uh, you will reach approximately or pretty close to a V in over two, and which is the uh, normally the duty cycle uh, times V in is the um, proper operation here. So in this case, you can eliminate some of these transient and the startup. So splitting the uh, resonant capacitor uh, in this case uh, could be beneficial two ways. One, uh, reduce the ripple and secondly, sort of soften the transient at uh, startup. This brings me to another riddle. In an application also of Fairchild or on semi, we can see these two circuits. These are half bridge series resonant converter I've just talked about. This is the resonant inductor, resonant capacitor, and the load is in series with the resonant uh, network. And then we have here a parallel resonant network. And uh, in this case, we have an inductor, a resonant inductor, a resonant capacitor. And parallel to the capacitor, uh, we have the uh, loading it uh, with the load through the transformer. Now, one of these circuits is really bad, very bad. And my question is, what is wrong with one of these circuits? And I'll be happy uh, to read comments uh, at the uh, YouTube uh, uh, page. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.